History of Goa From the establishment of Portuguese rule of the early modern period Goa's freedom struggle The Portuguese rule in Goa lasted for as long as 450 years The history of the Portuguese in Goa was similar to the British in India It is interesting to know that while the Portuguese ruled Goa their country itself was ruled by Spain from the late 16th century for a period of 60 years this period is known as succession crisis is also known as a result of the death of young king sebastian of portugal although goa is prevailing as a legacy of portuguese colonial era in fact its history dates back to as early as in the antiquity during which facts were mingled with mythology however the evident of history of goa is that it is a part of the mauryan empire 3rd century bc for the next 700 years goa was ruled by the succession of hindu dynasties such as the silaras the kadambas the chalukyans until 1312 goa was controlled by the muslims and it began to rise as an important landing place for the ship carrying horses to hampi one of the major developments of the middle ages was the discovery of the new land and water masses continents routes and so on portugal in fact took the lead in the field of geographical discoveries and explorations lured by the thrill of discovery and by the prospect of trade Portugal embarked on voyages to strange and unknown lands in the east. Bartolomeu Dias voyage led to discovery of the Cape of Good Hope. In 1498, Vasco da Gama landed at Calicut in India. This was indeed a turning point not only in the world history but also in the history of India. To the world Vasco da Gama epic voyage to India meant the discovery of a new sea route to the east. To the Portuguese, it opened vistas that would enable them to destroy the Arab monopoly over the spice trade and to gain control over the Indian Ocean. To India and the rest of Asia, it marked the beginning of European domination over their region. the starting point of the process of europeanization in asia with dreams of setting up a portuguese empire in the east alfonso de albuquerque arrived in the indian ocean waters in the early 16th century at the invitation of timaya the admiral of the vijayanagar fleet he undertook the task of conquering the city of goa from bijapur in 1510 he later conquered malacca in 1511 and homrus in 1515 this conquest along with the setting up of trading stations at strategic points along the coastline of india from dew to bengal enabled the portuguese to establish their supremacy in the indian ocean in 1543 The Portuguese acquired the adjoining Bardes and Salsed as payment for help rendered to Bijapur. By 1570, Goa had overcome the combined might of the Deccan, Ahmednagar and Calicut. The port of Goa was a scene of bustling activity during the first three quarters of the 16th century. It is said that every year about a thousand ship landed with macadamize would move to and fro the revenue earnings were utilized to establish edifices and beautify the city of goa the capital of the portuguese eastern empire this earned it the title golden goa in keeping with the belief of the religion and the king has to be the religion of his subject missionaries arrived at goa 
to spread Christianity. Mass conversions were common. Churches came up where temple once stood. The Tribunal of Inquisition set up in 1560 would try heretics. Since the end of the 16th century, the Portuguese fared badly in the East. The arrival of the Dutch posed a challenge to the Portuguese hold over the Indian Ocean. Soon they lost most of their prized possessions, Malacca, Ceylon and others. Goa felt the impact of Dutch blockades. The Esther the India was reduced to a shadow of its former itself. With the emergency of the Maratha power, Shivaji in 1667 and his son Sambaji in 1683 were undoubtedly threats to the Portuguese presence in Goa. It was only with the appearance of the Mughal army in the Deccan that turned Sambaji from Goa. The Portuguese were able to recover some ground in the second half of the 18th century. through protracted conflict with the bosleys of soundwadi and through manipulation of the affairs of the raja of sudan goa was able to extend its boundaries to include the territories of bicholim satari perne ponda sange kepe and kankon which together came to be called new conquest on other hand The city of Goa, Bardez and Salset were called Old Conquest. Portuguese rule. The fall of Basin in 1739 signaled the death knell of the Portuguese empire in the east. But it marked the beginning of new developments. The history of the colonials was just taking off. After centuries of almost unmentioned existence and exclusion, from public affairs the people of goa now began to take their legitimate place in the scene of matters the post 1750 period witnessed a tremendous change with the death and burial of the inquisition in 1812 religious intolerance was a thing of the past the period provided the people of goa opportunities for self expression that took the form of revolts and upsurge lively debates in the press and the like constitutional constitutionalism constitutionalism was also experimented with these changes were forerunners of events to come in the 12th to come in the 20th event These changes were forerunners of events to come in the 20th century. Events which eventually led to Goa liberation in 1961. First one, revolt and upsurge. The early modern period in the history has often been described as the age of enlightenment. It set the ball rolling for the age of revolutions. Since around 1750 the western world was in the grip of liberal ideas paving the way for momentous change 13 american colonies had broken free from england france was in turmoil caused by an intellectual movement launched by rousseau voltaire and others Jacobin ideas were spreading far and wide in Portugal. Colonies of Spain and Portugal in Central and South America were in a state of ferment. It is but natural that the echoes of such ferment and changes would be heard in the distant Goa under foreign yoke. Pinto's revolt of 1787 One such echo was in the form of Pinto's revolt of 1787. It was a revolt which aimed at overthrowing the alien government. It is viewed by the some historians as the second intercolonial revolt in modern times. 
the first being the american war of independence the plot to stage the revolt was masterminded by father caetano francisco cuto and father jose antonio gonzalez who were discontented with the portuguese policy of racial discrimination though possessing the requisite qualification they were both denied posts as bishops although two bishoprics had fallen vacant both of them left for portugal in 1781 to present the case before the concerned authorities but in the atmosphere then prevailing in portugal due to the terror unleashed by pinan maniki the said clerics were not been able to make any headway while in lisbon they came in contact with jose antonio pinto's family of candoli and father caetano vitorino faria father of the renowned abbe faria they returned to goa disappointed but firm in their stand that the need of the hour was to rise up in arms against the portuguese and free goa from their rule they were able to obtain approval for their plans from relatives friends and acquaintances they won over support of several officers of the bardes and ponda regions the conspirators used to hold meetings in the palatial mansion of the pintos at candoli which was later to become known as palacio da conspiracio palace of conspiracy 10th august 1787 was set as the date of the revolt but the said revolt never saw the light of the day on 5th august 5 days before the deadline a clerk at the adona comunidad disclosed the plans of the conspirators at first the portuguese governor kuna menezes attached no importance to the disclosure but later the authorities swooped down on the conspirators 47 were arrested and placed behind bars of these 17 were priests and 7 were military officers criminal proceedings were conducted by a judgment delivered on 9th december 1788 of the 17 clerics prosecuted three were acquitted and the rest were deported to portugal they were imprisoned in the fortress of san julian da bara where some ended their days and others being pardoned were allowed to return to india in 1807 of the laymen 15 were awarded capital punishment and others were deported flogged and so on among those who got death sentences one of them was manuel Caetano Pinto of the Pinto family at Candoli they were first tied to the tails of horses and dragged through the streets of the city later the hands were chopped off and then they were hanged after that their bodies were cotted the heads were fixed on stakes and were on display at public places for days together where they were allowed to rot this was nothing but an effort of the portuguese government to strike terror in the hearts of the people of goa so that they should never in future raise the banner of revolt rani revolts the ranis were feudal chieftains from satari who had severe ties with the bosleys of southwadi and had and had accepted Portuguese citizenship on the understanding that they would be able to retain their manorial feudal rights but the portuguese did not keep to their side of agreement the net result was a long struggle that spanned over a period about one and a half century the struggle came to be identified as the ranis revolt the first of which sparked of in 1755 the dipachi rani revolt broke out in 1852 the cause of this revolt 
were significant. In 1851, the Goa government passed orders imposing a tax on Mokashi, the hereditary estate. Besides, the Hindus were under compulsion to use western clothes, pants for men and blouses for women. The celebration of festival use of palanquins during processions, applying of kumkum to the forehead and the setting up of the tulsi vrindavan in front of the house were disallowed. These aroused reactions not only in the ranes of Satari but Hindus particularly in the new conquest areas. When the Portuguese government paid no heed to protest issued by the ranes and the desais, the ban of revolt 26 January 1852 was raised under the leadership of Dipaji Rane. The latter captured the fort of Nanus Satari. The Portuguese made efforts to curb the uprising, but instead it spread to Sange and Cape. In 1854, the Portuguese government decided to make peace with the Ranes, but soon backed out. The Pachi Rane continued to be a thorn in the flesh of the Portuguese in Goa. Eventually, the adversary council in charge of the affairs of Goa, in the absence of the governor who had failed for Portuguese, came to terms with the Ranes. It accepted the conditions put forth by them and pardoned the rebels. Another revolt was spearheaded by Kustoba Rane of the Saleli Rane family in 1869. For about two years, he unleashed a reign of terror. Police stations and outposts were mainly the targets of attack. The government made plans for his arrest. On 13 June 1871, he was, however, shot dead while coming out of the house. Around 18. 95 discontentment was brewing in Satari this was due to the attitude of the military officers Gomes da Costa and Datta Natkarni who would observe land other than Mokshi moreover a system of cultivation was introduced in Satari whereby the benefits of cultivation were enjoyed by the contractor and not the cultivator Thirdly, by a decree issued in August 1895, a platoon of about 420 soldiers were required to proceed to Mozambique to put down a revolt of African tribes. The Hindu soldiers were unhappy about it. Crossing sea was considered to be an anti-Hindu act. Therefore, some soldiers moved out of the Panjim barracks. and joined hands with the farmers of Satari in a revolt against the Portuguese. Dada Rane was their leader. They attacked and seized the fort of Halana Satari, moved to Bicholim and arrested Alfred Montero, who was in charge of the area. They then marched forth to Mapsa. On receiving the news of Dada Rane had captured the fort of Agwad, and was planning an attack on Panjim the portuguese authorities set up walls and barricades around it the people of panjim were terrified some moved to vasco da gama others even to far off belgaum 